Well, ladies and gentlemen, the BBC Samurai is still raging wildfires tonight and the scholars are baffled because it's been how many days, right? How many days? And, you know, the drama just never ends. And today we got a lot more than this Assassin's Creed and the woke Ubisoft situation, right? And I was, like, reading some comments, right? Like, you guys have been going crazy as well. Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. Now, they also say celebrate Prime Day with extra free games. So, so there's that. I want to also show you guys this flintlock, the Siege of Dawn. Another game just got destroyed because uh, because of Sweet Baby. We're gonna talk about it, and you're not gonna believe this, okay? So this is a real comment a man left on a YouTube video comment section, okay? So oh, yeah, make no mistake, this was found in the YouTube comment section. I know this is like this situation is already wilder than Johnny Sin's movies, but Ubisoft presents is what he says. Assassin's Creed Arctic protagonist will be a black bear instead of a polar bear for DEI purposes. You cannot make this up. And guys, uh, you might want to clench your butt cheeks. Roll it. Free to play or delay. Garbage can't be given away. Activist screech misogyny. Journalism hypocrisy. Not a big deal, says the Western man. But I'm pretty big in Japan. And hallucination, dreidel, schreier, force woke change and then get fired. Firewalk dev defense, digital weight gain, Sony two shareholders explain. Gender swap, lesbian, Mrs. Freeze, angry butch, Asian, weightlifting, pronoun, robot game, a disgrace. Kamala presidential drag race. Concord dev said, call me professor. Here's your throne and scepter, cross dresser. Ubisoft lie said, I don't know, maybe. Spirit <laughs> Enix ask about sweet baby. Your slop struggles to grab 2,000 necks on 100k one month in cash. Capcom crank that DEI quota, you're in a bathtub, this is the toaster. Stella Blade Summer Update Arrival, Gaming Jiggle Physics Revival, Your Delusions Not My Problem, Firewalk Whole Studio Full of Bottoms, Kyle the Hiss When You Speak His Name, 99k, Guess Who's to Blame, 80,000 Batteries, Get This Man to 100k Immediately! News, greedy apex tied the news, strike and halt your education, all the games I play are Asian. How dare you misgender that groomer, woke movements a cancerous tumor, Steinbaum needs more sensitivity, pandering to them is diversity. Mainstream media manipulation, emotional rhetoric escalation, old hoes misrepresent the news, cope and seethe, we're just not into you. What do you want me to pay you for ugly? What do you want me to pay you for ugly? Why do you want me to pay you for ugly? Why do you want me to pay you for ugly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Cut it right there, cut it right there. Yo, shout out to the homie Kyle, man. Get that brother to 100k immediately. Okay, as a brown man, I demand him to get 100k immediately. But guys, uh, shout out to the homie Yellow Flesh. Check this out. You're not gonna believe it. This is like just not stopping. This is peak gaming as they like to call it and gamers cannot be gamers without disappointment and nowadays sadly sweet baby ink also infecting the games as well okay sadly sadly i i know i know it, 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 it'd be like that roll it well we have another sweet baby failure over here at deidetected.com great website made by the great man the brutus mm -hmm. uh, you'll see the name of this title here flint block the siege of dawn so this is a game that sweet baby touched it just came out recently i think about a week or so it's been out and okay, one week? I thought it'd be fun to see how this game yeah. is doing. Yeah, yeah. And here are the Steam numbers. <laughs> A all-time peak of 541 players oh, over on man. Steam. Now, I don't have Xbox numbers. I don't have... Uh, shout out to you guys for actually playing the game. To shout out to 167 people playing this game, man. Let's go for 167 likes, guys. Can we beat the like goal here or something like that? Yeah, good luck, guys. Good luck uh, getting these people to buy the microtransactions in your games. Nor uh, the, the very good convers uh, conversion rate, okay? The very good conversion rate which is really really hard to get is 10% okay which means that like if you got 1000 people playing your game and getting 10% would be like 100 people buying some form of like content in the game you know microtransactions right so in this situation yeah good luck getting 16 people buy your micro microtransaction mate good luck yeah yeah, yeah. even with the best 10% rate yeah good luck getting that yeah ggs guys ggs i don't even know if it's on playstation so i don't know what those numbers are but on Steam? Yeah, probably gonna be like 200, 300, like let's just double it on the PlayStation for the sake of it, right? It's an absolute failure. 541 purchases for this game. That's pretty sad. 
unless there's more people playing <laughs> offline or something. Uh, this maybe, is pretty pathetic. Maybe. I don't even think this is an on online game. But that is some failure that, I don't know, it's got to be a, a new, a new, new milestone, house. I would think, or something. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. When it, it needs to be in the Guinness Book World Record, but guys, we gotta talk about the BBC Samurai as well. Like, wait for that. This game come out exactly July 18th. So yeah, it hasn't been out that long. Whoa. Now I want to do a correction here. I said 541 purchases. Those are just people that have actually played the game total. Because yeah. I think as soon as you fired up, you're gonna be on the Steam chart, so you would hit that peak, and that's the all-time peak. So there could be people buying it here and there, right? Like it's, this isn't an exact number. That's just peak. And there's probably people that bought it and haven't even played it. You would actually be surprised how many people buy games and don't even play them. That actually came out. Here's an article that covered it. Uh, Money Sync Steam users have reportedly spent almost $20 billion on games they never played. They never so, played. <laughs> it must be nice to be able to Bruh. buy all these games and not play them. Can, can a brother get two pennies though, something like that? Man, like, so you're saying there have been $20 billion worth of games purchased by these seconds. Uh, I guess seconds gonna be seconds, okay? But twenty billion dollars worth of games play uh, bought, but never played. That's crazy, though. What planet y'all be living on, man? Like, yeah, uh, talk about just uh, spending the money as is, right? Yo, can a brother get two pennies or something like that, man? Like, damn, bro. But yeah, people will do that. So, to be fair, let's Come go on, ahead people. and say a thousand people bought Flintlock. Oh, uh, that's still pretty damn pathetic. Pathetic. I think it's even free on Xbox Game Pass. I wonder how many people even downloaded it, even though, like, for free. Like, they don't even want to take up the space. By the way, just to show you how shitty games media is, uh, the gamer is encouraging this behavior. I'm glad I've got hundreds of dollars worth of unplayed games in my Steam library. Because they don't actually play games. <laughs> All right, so, Flintlock. A huge disaster. Nobody's playing it. Uh, surprisingly, critics giving it... A how is that a trophy? How is that something to celebrate? Oh, I got hundreds of your games that I never played. Uh, or I bought it. Okay, so it's like a new flex, right? Yeah, but yo, dog, back in the days, bro, suckers would be like uh, flexing with having Tic Tacs, right? They would be like, yo, I got Tic Tacs, brothers. You want some Tic Tacs? And no, nope, I ain't gonna give you Tic Tacs, okay? That was like in primary school and crap like that, right? Then it's like in the, the high school days would be like the, the, the Lamborghini kind of stuff, right? Yeah, back in the days it would be like the Lamborghini's flex and now it looks like that. Yeah, having $20 billion worth of games but not playing them. Okay, okay, that's a new flex, that's a new flex. A 71 out of 100, which actually isn't bad. Users hate it, 3.9. Let's check it out on B on PC. It's at a 70. And then uh -oh. over on Xbox, it's at a 72. Oh, oh. So they're not giving it really bad reviews but i wouldn't expect that because the game has sweet baby influence and because of that critics are going to kind of go easier on this game because it's got a lot of the dei stuff in it because uh, do, do we have user reviews uh, user reviews so that they will give it an automatic higher review it's just how game journalists roll uh they roll yeah. with corruption and they care more yeah. about activism than actual gaming but one thing i do want to show you is why all of these websites attacked dei detected and Garudas. remember when all that went down when he started to expose the sweet baby shit and yeah. all of those game journalists like Alyssa Mercanti from Kotaku went wild trying to destroy him and deplatform him. Well, yeah. it's because of all stuff of like that. this. There's an interesting article from that park place at Drop going over something that Rocksteady said. A Grand Theft Auto developer claims negative review campaigns can lead to significant harm, including loss of players and revenues. <gasps> now, they used to say that what we no. say doesn't matter. Turns out, though, when you criticize this shit, you do reach people. And they lose. I, I gotta shout out the gamers! Shout out to the gamers, man. Because, listen, man, the only positive that came out of all of this is that gamers are reuniting finally, bro. Like, I have never seen gamers being together this much ever in the history of mankind, okay? Because for the longest amount of time, right, like, seconds would be, like, beefing, 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 beefing. Everybody would be beefing based on PlayStation and Xbox, right? And the PC Masterist would be just sitting back, chilling, and watching, like, the Sony ponies and the Xbox Andes just for no reason whatsoever go crazy and be like okay you suck you suck your mama suck this and that right like yeah so that has been an, uh, a situation and uh, to be honest though memes are fine though like i love the banter as well i love it when some of the sony ponies get mad i love it when the xbox andys get mad or stuff that don't matter sometimes it's perfectly fine to uh, uh to have light-hearted jokes right like I, I love memes okay i love i love the banter talk but when it beces to the point where it gets like super toxic and suckers take it for real for real as somebody insulted their mother that's when it becomes unfun and it's like what are we doing here right so we had that era we had that face and make no mistake like 
if tomorrow games started uh, started to become better like for example uh, no woke politics in them and actual content in the game and actually good because minus the woke crap assassin's creed and star wars outlaw minus the woke crap minus all of this uh, agenda that they're pushing minus all of that the game sucks ass bro like we had better games during xbox 360 and playstation 3 era bruh like we had better games back then versus whatever crap we're getting nowadays so yeah absolutely so gamers are now coming together as one and i absolutely love to see that man shout out to all of you guys are watching this video as well shout out to people uh, out there that are not currently watching this video shout out to all the gamers that are coming together man yeah absolutely bro we need to reunite bro like <laughs> we, we, we can solve this problem brothers if we vote our if we continue voting with our wallets brothers we can actually solve the problem brothers okay we need to get together gamers need to rise up now uh, they are saying if we talk negatively about the game it's actually gonna hurt their sales because uh, guess what's changed because back in the days and you probably heard me say this and the entire reason i said this is because it has been true so far but i feel like that now gamers are getting older and gamers are growing up and gamers are realizing if i'm talking trash about a game i also gotta vote with our wallets and listen man that's progress right there right because uh, like uh you if you have been around the channel you probably heard me say that i'm not gonna buy this year's call of duty last year right and guess what i did i'm i'm about to be 28 very soon last last year i was like closer to 27 or i was 27 when modern warfare 3 came out and i was like bro uh, i'm not gonna buy the game because it's uh, you know what i mean right like i'm sick and tired of it i'm a huge fan of call of duty make no mistake and i want the game to get better but i'm just not gonna buy it right and guess what i didn't buy the game and that was my very first call of duty that i didn't buy the game so i can speak on my uh, for myself and now what we're seeing is that a lot of people are following up with hey if i don't like a game I'm gonna talk trash about it, but then I'm also not gonna, and I guess they're finally realizing, although this is not necessarily gonna apply to Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto 6 is gonna be a massive title, okay? It, it, there, there would have to be really, really dumb to destroy that franchise, bruh. Like, there is absolutely zero way they can destroy it. Yeah, we're hearing that it can be woke, but how woke is it gonna be? Is it gonna be woke to the point where they're, uh, like, uh, super woke? Or is it gonna be woke to the point where it, it's gonna be the real life parody because in real life you got the woke stuff right uh and uh, <clears throat> if it's gonna be a real life parody like gta has always been then that's perfectly fine though but if it becomes to the point where it's pushing agendas then you know what i mean then we're, we're gonna have that ww5 in gaming then everybody we're gonna be like tearing it apart it's like it's gonna go crazy but with gta i guess you know it i don't even have i don't even have to be the one to say it i guess you know that this game is gonna sell like hotcakes regardless though there would be some of the older folks right that might not purchase if there is too much of the woke crap but the younger generation the teenagers the young adults uh, yeah sick is gonna sick is gonna complain about it but sick is gonna buy it gta 6 is gonna be that one of those games and i hope that it doesn't become woke okay but when take two is saying that i believe him because you know what take two is one of those companies that see grand theft auto succeeding and they, they are a shark they're a whale out there they don't care about like all of these other games uh, companies okay they don't care whether you hate them it's gonna be good for them if you don't buy their game and you buy gta 6 instead right and they know that they got something massive in their hands so they are not even worried it's like their plate is full now so they can speak the truth it's one of those things once you have if you were given all the money in the world you're not gonna care what anybody thinks right you're gonna just speak the truth or at least you're gonna speak your truth because uh you know there is the truth uh the truth is the truth is always in the middle you got your version and the other party got their version and the truth is often in the middle right and with the with the take two it looks like that their plate is full they got all the money in the world right they know they're gonna be making all the money in the world with gta 6 so hey let's go ahead and speak the truth and it looks like that that's what they're doing they claim that negative review campaigns can lead to significant harm including loss of players and revenues i mean tough love uh tough uh, tough love <laughs> tough luck as well tough love and tough luck uh i guess gamers are waking up finally but uh oh let's talk about this japan's issue with yasuke shout out to all tori for this one really. Power. do not deserve to keep it now at first glance people might react and say oh my god it's because yasuke is black that they're upset and i would tell you who's watching this video and probably new to all of this that you're kind of right 
but not for the reason that you think. It's easy for people to brush this off as some form of overbearing prejudice against black people, but that's probably what Ubisoft was hoping for and hoping to hide behind in case there's any criticism of their game. If you look back at every Assassin's Creed game, the main playable characters usually fit the demographic of the area or region within the historical story being told. In videos like yeah. AKG 29s, where he showcases all the main outfits of all the playable protagonists in the series, you can get an idea of this. And one thing that you'll notice is that for everyone, their ethnicity fits their historical setting. AKG 29 also has a video showing the religion and nationality of every protagonist in Assassin's Creed's games, so you can check this out. You can see his nationality is American for the first one, there's Syrian, Italian, French, and we'll actually get back to this character, Welsh Adewale from Trini. And here's an interesting thing too. Notice that he is a dark-skinned man of African descent. Usually when you see somebody who is of the lighter shade, they have more European features, they're of European descent. We all descended from Africa, by the way. But anyway, there's a point that I'm going to make later on in the video, and it's kind of funny, but it's really not funny. But then this is this is going to prove to you why this okay. is a problem. There's a bigger problem inside of the- uh, Okay, so kind of funny, but not funny. So that means it's still kind of funny, right? Okay. All right. Okay problem here that people just aren't seeing, but I'm going to bring it up and it's going to be hilarious to you. Or not. So yeah, it was very interesting um, to people that an assassin- Make your mind up, woman! You need to make your mind up! But man, shout out to Altori, man. This woman looks like going to be spitting facts, though. Like, I already feel it, man. Looks like that she's full of estrogen. Like, how a woman is supposed to be, okay? Men uh, men is supposed to have, like, that testosterone, okay? Woman's supposed to have the estrogen, okay? Looks like that she is, uh, a real one. She's a real one. Shout out to her, man. Shout out to her for speaking facts out here, okay? I guess uh, it's gonna get pretty uh, mood swingy in a second, okay? Which I definitely love, okay? I love it when the, the, the women get mood swingy, though, okay? So. This Creed game set in feudal Japan isn't using a Japanese man. Despite Yasuke having been brought to Japan as a slave, he wasn't Japanese. Even if you go with the fact that there's barely anything known about him, barring what these Wikipedia sites and articles are doing to change history right after the game was announced and people were calling that out, do you think that it is in poor taste to feature someone who isn't Japanese and looks nothing like the Japanese as a main playable character instead of a Japanese man, because I can understand why the Japanese or other people would feel that way. And consider yep. Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, where you play as Aveline, an African-French assassin and the first female protagonist in the series, fighting against Templars to control the city. Now, she was an appropriate choice for her setting and narrative. The decision, though, to place Yasuke in this game, the Shadows game, in contrast, really does feel tone deaf, especially given the cultural and historical context of feudal Japan. By the mm -hmm. way, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation originally wasn't even a core game. It was more of a DLC that had been since packaged with the Assassin's 3 remastered. And this highlights even more the misstep in Ubisoft's choice, making the inclusion of Yasuke seem more like a marketing ploy than a thoughtful narrative decision. And the Abilene character does appear later on in the franchise in 2003 Black Flag's game, but only in its expansion pack. But anyway, within that spinoff, you're playing this biracial woman whose father was a wealthy merchant and her mother was African. Uh, you know, there's this thing that women love uh, picking up the, the past or digging up the past. This is apparently true. <laughs> She is digging up the past, but this time is she wrong though? She's not wrong. This is called thorough research, ladies and gentlemen. This is actual research. Shout out to Altori once again. She be digging up the past, as my homeboys would like to say, but I say this is thorough research, man. She out here doing work of God right now. Yeah, keep digging, keep digging. We love it. We love these kind of digs though and she was raised in a wealthy and privileged home in New Orleans by her wealthy father and stepmom. And she wanted to free the slaves. She actually did that in her free time because there was so much injustice around them. Yeah. <laughs> then we have Yasuke, who was a slave. And all I'm thinking is, okay, if you're gonna have black people in a big franchise like this as playable characters or main protagonists, why do they always have to be connected to slavery in some way, shape, or fashion? Hey, 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 yeah! Time out, time out, tranquilo! Tranquilo, mami. Tranquilo, tranquilo, mami. I mean, seriously. Remember the Trini guy from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag? Yep, I, I said I was coming back to that. Yeah, he was a former slave from Trinidad who served as the quartermaster of Black Flag protagonists Edward Kenway on board his ship, the Jackdaw, before joining the Brotherhood of Assassins. You see what I mean? Wait, Jackdaw? Wait, what, what, what just, what? Of Black Flag protagonists Edward Kenway on board his ship, the Jackdaw, before joining the Brotherhood of Assassins. What, Jackdaw? No, nah, she probably said something else. Jackdaw, okay, okay, my, my bad, my bad, my bad. Bruh. Assassins. You see what I mean? Like, I know that you're trying to stay true to history, and yes, there was slavery back then, but they make it seem often as though every time there's a black character, they always have to have slavery in their narrative some way, shape, or form, as if there are black people that didn't exist around the world that were not slaves. I'll get back to that shortly. And so, why use Yasuke? From my knowledge, this is the first Assassin's Creed game set in Japan, and instead of using a Japanese man, considering how every other character in their setting is from that region, like the Trini guy, because it was in, like, the setting where that would make sense for him to be there, you use an African man in feudal Japan. And so let me get this straight. Are you going to then use a Japanese man in Assassin's Creed game set in Nigeria in the future? <laughs> it really doesn't make any sense and it's very tone deaf and disrespectful to the Japanese. It's also disrespectful to the African and dark skin communities because given what has been going on with the weaponizing of diversity, you're basically setting up other people to be against the black community. Not only- Exactly! 
exactly and uh, i've been reading a lot of uh, my comments right and mo and generally speaking it, of course it doesn't apply to everybody it doesn't apply to all the japanese people as well a lot of them are upset with it rightfully so you're literally uh, uh spitting on their culture right now so hey oh my you, oh you think that they're not gonna be they're not gonna be upset with it like come on now man it, yeah exactly like if, if they were spitting on your culture you would be upset too not all of not everybody of course but like generally speaking the general audience the general uh people would be of course they would be you're spitting on their culture nobody likes that nobody likes that and of course the reason uh, why a lot of people that are not even japanese talking about it is because they know this is disrespectful you shouldn't be doing that and secondly secondly if you allow this to happen they can come for you as well. They can come for your culture as well. So we really gotta talk about it. And I'm I'm seeing like Japanese folks. I'm taking I'm seeing my black homies out there. The black folks as well. The black community is also talking about it because they yeah they're using black people as shields, making Yasuke gay when the real life person wasn't. It's not a a fictional character. It's a real person that is no longer with us. And he's probably in heaven or hell. I don't know, but he's not with us. And they made him gay. He cannot even come down here and defend himself. You made a Ubisoft. You made a real person, a real man gay in the game that wasn't even in real life bro like y'all suckers should be ashamed of yourself bro like what the hell is wrong with you uh, turning like, the man's sexuality like that bro y you could have talked about some other stuff and of course uh, we're hearing that he was a we're learning that he was a retainer not a samurai and they use that and, and a lot of my the, the the black community is also waking up and gamers are all around are generally waking up and seeing what these suckers are doing right now man absolutely pathetic bro absolutely pathetic man did they hijack this opportunity from japan and it might not seem like a big deal to people but trust me if there was a game set in uganda or tanzania or nigeria and the playable character was white even if they existed in history somehow some way in some form or fashion all people would be rightly upset especially yeah. if it's the only or first type of that game in the setting in this franchise so not only does ubisoft uh, yeah absolutely and as a brown man i'm sick and tired of them pl playing this race card, man. <laughs> yeah, bro, what, what, the, what, what is going on, man? What is going on? And I would say the same thing, right? Like, uh, for example, if they put a brown man like me, I'm Pakistani, right? So if they put a brown like my, a brown man like me in Assassin's Creed Japan, oh no, <laughs> oh hell, <laughs> yeah, that would cause more drama as well. Absolutely and rightfully so, though. You know, if you're gonna make, for example, an Assassin's Creed in India or Assassin's Creed in Pakistan, then having that culture appropriate person, like you know, a native, a native to that region, makes sense absolutely but like why y'all suck is doing that okay you're adding yasuke he was a real person but but at, but but if you're gonna use a real person and say that the game is historically accurate because they did say that guys they did say this game was historically accurate now they're saying it's historical fiction though because they have been caught and there has been this much backlash about it right so yeah absolutely now they're actually turning around though <laughs> yeah man and this drama is gonna keep on going let me know your thoughts guys check out this video on the screen because this also recently came out we had new information about gta 6 and we're hearing that it might actually get delayed because yeah and an ex rockstar game dev also came out and he's saying not my opinion guys not my words he's saying that gta 6 might be disappointing why why did he say that i don't know check out this video on the screen i mean we know but check out this video on the screen if you already seen it then check out the video on the left